developing a game plan, a business plan on how they're going to possibly be successful, they automatically, with something under their own control, have added a risk that they could they could manage because they weren't looking at the cards, able to look at the cards that are dealt to. And that's kind of what we're going to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to set the stage as to why that why we're going through this exercise, okay? Um, and I think it's a good concept. This class is a good concept because it gets you away from the textbook mode and has you start thinking about reality. What really goes on out there, okay? So, from the financial statement, basics, okay? You have to develop a business plan, right? And that entails balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, okay. Well, before we do any of that, we have to understand some of the concepts here, okay? There's, uh, there's no accounting majors in here, are there? Is there all, all business majors? Is that primarily what? No, it's not right to not business majors. Okay, well then, then, then we really have to get up to speed, okay? Okay, we have to get up to speed about these concepts, okay? Some financial basics. So the second page I have here, you know, a balance sheet. Who knows what a balance sheet is? Okay. A balance sheet is a name for a statement that accountants put in financial statements, okay? And its balance sheet is something that's not just related to businesses. Each one of you has your own personal balance sheet, okay? I bet you if you went home and you and, and really <coughs> think about it, your balance sheet is this. You look at your bank statement, you look in your checkbook and says, how much money do I have, okay? That's an asset. That's something that you own. Um, if you went through your closet and totaled up the cost of all the clothing that you have, shoes, bikes, stereo equipment, computers, if you add it up, those are all assets that you own, okay? So that would be part of your balance sheet. Well, the other side, though, is you have to look at, when you look at your computer and say, you know, that's worth $2,000, but I still owe 1000 Well, that would be a liability, a debt that you owe, okay? So what a balance sheet is, is a summary of what people own, assets, okay? University of Pittsburgh, this is an asset for the University of Pittsburgh, they own this. This is on their balance sheet under equipment, okay? But they also have to look at, is this completely paid for? Do we still owe money on this, okay? So. A balance sheet is saying, what do we own and what do we owe on the things we own, okay? And remember, we're not talking about debits or credits. Did I mention debits or credits? You know, let the accountants, that's the accountant's language, I like to talk like that, okay? Um, but we don't need to talk about debits or credits. A balance sheet says, basically, what do we own? That's an asset, okay? <laughs> Less what we owe on that, a debt, a liability, and the difference is our net worth, our equity, okay? Um, you might have heard your parents talk about taking out a home equity loan. Your parents own a home, it's worth $100,000, fair market value. <coughs> they, might, they might have $30,000 of debt still on their mortgage. So if someone says, you know, I have $70,000 of equity in my home, that that's the difference between the fair market value of 100 and what they still owe, and that's their net worth, okay? So a business creates a balance sheet, and you know their accountant keeps track of this on an annual basis of collecting, keeping track of what they own, things that they've bought throughout the year, that are still on hand, and also the corresponding debt associated with that, okay? So then we get to the balance sheet. Okay, this sounds like something has to be in balance, correct? Okay, well, the, the, the basic equation, the basic motto that accountants follow is assets equal liabilities plus net worth. And if you look at that equation, it pretty much makes sense. This is the main equation. So if, if your balance sheet is gonna balance your assets must equal your liabilities plus your net worth. And I have an example of a balance sheet in here, 
okay? But if I had $10,000 of assets, it could be cash, it could be equipment, it could be prepaid expenses, and I had debt of $7,000, okay? How much equity do I have? What's my net worth? What's my net worth? $3,000, right, okay? Because the, your net worth is the difference between what you own and what you owe, right? So my net worth is $3,000. It completes our equation, so now if I put an equal, 7,000 plus 3,000 is 10. Right? So that's my, my one side, and that equals $10,000. We've balanced. We have a balance sheet, okay? Now you'll see in my example, the balance sheet will break down this 10,000, what assets are owned, and it'll break down what are the components of liabilities. But the bottom line is, when you total up assets, it's, an equal, it's going to equal the total of liabilities and net worth. Does that make sense? Any questions? So you guys, that's, that's all you need to know. You'd be accountants now. <laughs> so, so, pretty straightforward. I have, actually, I have a question. Yeah. It's kind of a dumb question. No. But liabilities, you, you owe the money, so why wouldn't that be like negative? Do you know what I mean? Why wouldn't that be like, thir like 13? Well, that's a good question. She, she's saying if it's a liability, why wouldn't that be a negative? Because you, you're right. You think of a liability, that's a negative. We owe that money, right? Okay, well, I can prove this another way. Okay, using your concept of negative. You're right. Let's subtract the 7,000 from that. Okay, let's subtract that because you think of liabilities, that's negative, right? Well, you come up with $3,000, right? That's our net worth. Our equation still works, right? Okay, our equation. That is our net worth. And really, when you think about it, if we said today we're selling everything, we're going to sell everything we have, pay off our debts. In this situation, what will we be left over with? We should have $3,000 in our pocket, right? We should have $3,000 in our pocket. That's balance sheet. Okay? That's pretty print. Now, in your scenario, okay, in your projected statements in your business plan, you're going to come up um, how often do you want them to create a balance sheet? Is it an annual balance sheet? Yeah, it's annual. Okay, it's an annual balance sheet. <clears throat> Just to give you a little hint how to approach it, okay? And I'll emphasize this again once we get to the, the income statement side. I wouldn't really worry about this balance sheet until the end. Until you've already, until you've done your income statement, until you've projected <coughs> sales, and the cost of doing business, the expenses, because this balance sheet is kind of going to be the end result of what type of sales that you have. Okay, it's going to be kind of a plug number, and and I'll try to explain it to you once we go through the financial statements. But what I'm saying for now, when you're putting together these projected financial statements, I think you need to concentrate on the income statement first, and coming up with a projection of your sales level in year one, two, and three. <coughs> And then knowing your sales level and your costs associated with doing that volume of sales, and then your then the result of that will be coming up with your projected net profit each year. Okay, that will help you determine what's on your balance sheet. And for example, if you're in a business that generally customers pay you in cash or check, you're not giving them terms. Meaning you're not saying, hey, look, I'll render this service you have within 30 days to pay me. If that's not the case, you know, basically if you say I have 100,000, I'm projecting 100,000 of sales, my costs are going to be about 80, you're going to have a $20,000 profit at the end of that period, and there's no credit extended to customers, you're going to have $20,000 of cash at the end of that period, right? Okay? So, you know, your income statement is going to kind of drive what's on your balance sheet. In that example, you're going to have an asset of twenty thousand. Let's assume no debt, so your net worth has to be twenty thousand. Okay, so you know it's kind of like don't put the cart in front of the horse. 
the horse is the income statement. That's what drives the financials. And the balance sheet is a snapshot. Where do we stand at this point in time? Okay? And that will kind of, I know that's kind of a little sometimes difficult to comprehend, but maybe when we go through the next couple of pieces, that will help tie it together. And I'll talk about it at the end. Are you freezing? Is it cold in here? I'm getting blown away. Is it too? You're getting cold in here? I feel like I'm talking outside of here. Okay. If it gets warm, we don't want to get warm because you'll start falling asleep. Okay? So let me know and I'll open up the window. Okay. Let's go to the third page. Everyone pretty clear on the balance sheet? Pretty much follow that? Okay. Second, this is a second basic financial statement that businesses prepare. And then this is basically what accountants do. They prepare financial statements. And the components of a financial statement are a balance sheet, income statement, you often hear people say profit and loss, and a cash flow statement. Okay? Those are the three base components of a financial statement. Now if you look at Fortune 500 companies, sometimes you really have to sift through to find out the three basic, because they have all this other propaganda, uh, colored pages, and all this stuff about how great their company is. And sometimes you, have, you might find on one page all three of these statements, okay? But those are the three basic statements, and we're going to talk about each one of those today. Okay, income statement. Income statement, whereas the balance sheet was a point in time. Just kind of think about it this. This, this helps me understand it, okay? This is not textbook. A balance sheet. Think of taking a snapshot photo, okay? If I took a picture of our financial condition, that would be a balance sheet. At a moment's time, I took a picture, how much do we have in assets? How much do we have liabilities and the differences are net worth? I took a snapshot, that's a point in time, what do we have? An income statement <coughs> is you toss out the, snap, the, the, the camera and you get a, 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 a um, a movie camera, a, a, a recording camera. And this camera, if you can compare it to an income statement, is filming, let's say, a whole month, or filming the whole year. And it's recording what's happened throughout that whole year. Mainly, how much have we had in sales, and what were our expenses in order to generate that sales. Okay? Is that kind of clicking? Kind of think of it like a balance sheet. I took a picture at a point in time. What was the business composed of? Assets, liabilities, net worth. I took a movie camera and filmed the business's entire year, and it showed me a history of the sales for that year and expenses. Okay? So an income statement is basically a statement that reflects the activity of a business for a given period of time. Okay? And in your, in your situation, um, how often do they do it? Is it annual income statements? Well, it's an annual, but I believe in the first year it's quarterly, uh, but then I think... They have to break it down into quarterly? Okay. So, what are the components of an income statement? Well, our top, the top section is um, revenues, right? Revenues, which are sales, okay? That's, that's the driving force. That's the fuel for the business. If you don't have sales, you can only last so long. You can see all these dot-coms out there, okay? This is one thing dot-coms haven't had. Or some dot-coms have had it, but they also have more in expenses than sales, okay? And you can only go so long. You know, those dot-coms, they had a concept and they might have had sales, but they didn't have sales to support their costs. And the only, only way they were able to survive for a year or two years is there was investors just pumping money into them to keep them going. So hopefully once they got to a certain point, their business plan would kick in and they would start to become self-sufficient. Okay? And that's why this business plan that you're putting together is very important because, you know, based on your realistic variables involved, you'll be able to see, really, the important thing is, how much starting money do you need 
to give yourself the best chance to be successful and, and, and get to the point where you can have self-generated <coughs> revenues and take care of itself, okay? It's, so, on our income statement, we have revenues, and then we have expenses, okay? Less expenses. And the difference equals our profit. We're optimistic, but it also could net a loss, okay? So we have our movie camera, and we filmed the, the one year of business, and we filmed the total sales. We also filmed the expenses, the cost of doing business. These are the costs that we have to incur to generate these sales. And the difference is our profit. Our profit gets added to our net worth. Because if we're just on a cash basis, we had $100,000 of sales, okay? And we had $97,000 of expenses we have a first year profit of $3,000. Being real simple about it, that ties into here. That's why our net worth is $3,000. We have $3,000 of cash. We've paid all our bills. No liabilities. So $3,000 in cash equals our $3,000 in net worth. Okay? So that's an income statement. Any questions? Make sense? If you want to be accountant, it's time to change your major. Which what grade are most we are we have sophomores, freshmen? What juniors and seniors? Okay. Well and you you made your decision, you can't change it now. Parents won't pay for it anymore. You gotta stick to it. Go out there and get a job. But but you know what? No matter what your major is, whether you know, whether you do any accounting at all. Um, you know, just because this is, we're talking about this in a business context, it applies to you personally. Don't you think every individual can have a balance sheet? Certainly. Everyone has their own balance sheet. Everyone has their own income statement. It might be a little bit different than a business. Instead of sales, that could easily be wages, right? Wages is your sales, less your expenses. You know, what's your... What's it cost to operate a car? What's it cost rent, groceries, clothing? Okay? So this isn't just a concept that applies to businesses only. It applies to you personally as well. Okay, that's the income statement. Now, the third statement that we talked about was, I think that's the next page, statement of cash flows. And this one... This one, I can tell you this. You know, I went to uh, I went to John Carroll University. Have you ever heard of John Carroll? It's up in Cleveland, small small school. Um, and I originally I, I knew I wanted to be a business major, okay, but I wasn't sure what type of business major. So when I started out, I started out in the you know the core level business classes. You got to take basic accounting, economics, uh, you know, statistics or whatever. And I thought it I thought I wanted to be a management major, okay? So I took my first round of business classes, and I kind of liked account, accounting, kind of things went well, and I thought to myself, you know, if I'm a management major, what does that mean? When I get out, what do I do? I mean, there's no, there's, you know, there's not as much structure. I said, look, maybe if I become an accounting major and learn accounting, I can still be a, man a manager, right? I can still get into banking you know what, I can still get into marketing, okay? So I kept, I kind of kept my options open. But, so I wasn't a true bean counter. I was someone that thought about being a manager that's now jumped over to the accounting side. And I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure what, what these accountants were up to. I wasn't sure what this, this whole concept was about. I knew about the balance sheet. I knew about the income statement. But this, this cash flow statement, I was, this, this thing, it was a stranger to me. It really was. I was a little leery about this cash flow statement and its whole purpose. In fact, when you become an accounting major, 
the course that they make you take is called intermediate accounting. And, it, and the neat thing about accounting major is the fact that you either, you, you're going to eventually know whether you want to be an accounting major or not. Okay? There's no, there's no middle ground. They put you through this intermediate accounting and it weeds out people. You know, and whether that's bad or good, you know once you go through that course whether you want to continue on as an accounting major or you want to go another direction. Okay? Well, in my intermediate accounting class, the professor starts talking about this cash flow statement. And like I said, I wasn't a true accountant. I came from the other side and I wasn't, sh wasn't totally sure about this accounting thing. And I asked my professor in a class, and it was probably out of ignorance I because I really didn't understand this cash flow statement. I asked my professor, after he went through the whole session on cash flow, I said, look, Professor Madison, this cash flow statement, this sounds to me to be nothing more than another statement the accountants have created to give themselves a job. I said, I said this statement is just a bunch of numbers that no one else understands except accountants. And so you need accountants to tell you what this means, which means accountants hold the, hold the power. And he proceeded to explain to me what a cash flow statement is. And, you know, I'll tell you what, if I had, out of the three statements, the most useful statement, if you ever look at a financial report, my most useful one, I think, is a cash flow statement. Because even though it seems relatively obscure to me and I didn't understand it, when you get right down to it, what most people can understand is following cash. Cash, cash has some, some magical thing that everyone can relate to cash. The almighty cash. And people follow cash. You know when you lose money, you know when you gain money. And people can understand it. You know, you can talk about debits and credits, sometimes it goes over people's heads. But if you talk about following cash, it makes a lot of sense. And this cash flow statement, we're gonna, I'm going to try to explain to you so it shows you how the cash flow statement really ties all the financial statements together. Okay? You have a report called a balance sheet. It's telling you about assets and liabilities and, and equity. And you kind of understand that. And you have over here an income statement saying, we had sales of X amount of dollars, we have expenses, of X, and here's our net profit, okay? But what does that all mean? I mean, really, from the standpoint of the flow of cash, how does this all come together, okay? Well, really, what you need to do with understanding a statement of cash flow it really breaks down where a business got its money from. The resources, okay? Indicates where the uses, or excuse me, the resources, where the, the flow of money came from. Where can money come from? It can come from sales, right? But, but that might not be the only cash flow inflow of a business. Businesses borrow money, okay? Now, even though they have to repay that back, that's actually cash coming into the business, correct? I mean, so a banker hands the business a check and they deposit it in their bank account. So that's a cash inflow, right? Where else, where else can we really generate positive cash flow? What if, what if I bought something? What if I bought this? What if this made something that I, that I turn around and sell to my customers? And I bought this, but didn't pay for it yet. Well, I bought something that's going to make me money, but no cash came out of my pocket because I, I maybe borrowed it on, or bought it from a vendor with 30-day terms. I have to repay it in 30 or 60 days. So that's a use of cash flow. In essence, I, I have an asset without actually using cash Okay, at this point in time. I'm going to pay for it somewhere down the road on the profits of my business, but right now it's a positive cash flow. So basically what the cash flow statement tries to do, or what it does, it doesn't try, it does do. It says, give us the cash flows either provided or used by the operations of the business. Okay? Then it says, we want, a, we want an accounting of the cash flows provided are used by financing activities. And then we want a third segment of this report 
to give us cash flows provided or used by investment activities. So you see what happens is that the cash flow statement basically breaks down the flow of cash in a business into three parts. It says, let's see the cash activity for this business for its operations. Okay? We don't, at that point, we don't care about what you did with the bank. We don't care what you did with the investors. We want to see how the operations standing by themselves have done. Okay. Let's talk about that. Cash flows from operations. This is where the income statement comes into play. Our starting point is our net income, right? Okay? We know our income statement gives us a number that we can start with. And basically what I'm saying is income statement is a summary of the business operations, sales and expenses, right? So what if we're going to try to break down the cash flows from our operations, what better place to start with our net profit or our net loss, okay? Well, and this is where it really clicked with me, because a business could have $100,000 of profit, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's $100,000 of cash. Okay? I want you to understand that. When you look at a financial statement, and you look at an income statement, and you see a gigantic profitable number, net income, you assume that that's a successful business. But you could, you could be misreading that. Okay? And that's why it's important to understand that. I could make $100,000 but what if I never paid my vendors? How, how, how good is $100,000 if I really, I really generated $100,000 just because I didn't pay vendors? Is that $100,000 really realistic? No. I mean, it looks good on paper, but if I still owe my creditors a ton of money, how good is, how good is that $100,000? So. We take a look at some things, and you'll see in some of my examples, we look at what we call you know, changes in current assets and current liabilities. Okay? Now, all that this means is this. If my accounts receivable, when I, when I say accounts receivable, that means customers have bought things from me and have not paid me for it yet, okay? If, if my accounts receivable has gone up $50,000 from the prior year, that means that I've sold $50,000 of merchandise or services, but I have not been paid for it, right? So, We've got to adjust this hundred thousand because there's fifty thousand dollars that's not representative of cash. Okay? When we sold it, we have the fifty thousand dollar sales in our income statement, but we don't have the cash. So if we're gonna be adjusting our books to show follow a cash, we've gotta back that out of that, right? Okay? Accounts payable. <laughs> accounts payable are the reverse. You know, we have to buy raw materials to produce what we're doing, but we might not pay our vendor instantaneously. We might not write a check. Remember, sometimes we'll, we'll have the terms with our vendor saying, we'll pay you in 30 days, 45 days, okay? So, let's say in my example, our accounts payable increased, you know, by let's say sixty thousand dollars. Now let's let's use twenty thousand. Okay.
by cash provided by operations would be $70,000. Everybody follow that? Our income statement said, hey, you had a profit of $100,000, right? When we talked about the income statement. But I look at that $100,000 and say, well, what does that really mean in reference to cash? Does that really mean that we have $100,000 more in cash? Well, I can't answer the question without doing a cash flow statement, okay? The first component is saying, look, you had a $100,000 profit, but 50 of it is from people who didn't pay you. Services or sales that you rendered, but people didn't pay you. So we gotta back that up, right? But then we also did another thing. We didn't pay all our vendors either. We used our vendors as a form of financing. So from the standpoint of our operations, our operations generated $100,000 profit, but it only provided $70,000 in hard cash. So that adds some insight into how a business is operating, what it's doing, okay? And it really, um, it's, it's kind of like a, an algebra part, you know, when you're in algebra, you had to prove the equation. So you have, you have the two components, you have a balance sheet and an income statement. You know what a cash flow statement does? It really proves those two statements and ties them together. So I really came to understand, once you understand the cash flow statement, it really makes sense, and it's really an excellent statement to get a pretty, get a good understanding of what's going on behind the scenes, okay? And it's, and it's really a statement that's kind of always in the background, it's not, not, as, not as well known as the other ones are, okay? So this is just an example. Now, this is component one. We have the second component that we talked about, uh, which is cash flows provided or used by act financing. I mean, basically, that's pretty straightforward. It, in this section, basically what we're saying is, look, have we borrowed any additional money from banks? And if so, what is it? That's cash coming into the business, correct? And what have we repaid back to banks from previous borrowings? That's cash outflow, okay? So in my example, let's say we borrowed We borrowed $100,000, and we've repaid $30,000, okay? Without repay, that's money going out, this is money coming in, right? So, we have cash from financing activities. positive $70,000, okay? That's component number two. I'm kind of getting real fragmented here, but... Okay, component number three, cash flows from investment activities. Do we buy any new assets, okay? Remember, when we buy a new, a new truck for our delivery business, that's not an expense on an income statement. That's an asset. That's not an income. So we didn't, that purchase is not in the expenses that determine our net profit. That's an asset we bought. So the cash flow statement, hey, we're following cash. That money came out of our pocket, okay? So we bought a new truck. $30,000, okay? And let's say we had some investors that infused some additional money into our business, okay? So that's, that's money coming in. Remember, the bottom line is we're following cash. You know, we might get confused in accounts receivable, accounts payable, but the bottom line is we're following cash because we know that net profit does not rep represent net cash for the business, okay? So we had investors put in uh, 
$20,000. They invested $20,000 more owners into the, into the business. So we have cash used for investment purposes. We have a net use of $10,000. Okay, so we got our three components. Now we tie this all together, okay? We had our cash provided by operations was $70,000. Okay, positive. It provided $70,000 of cash from our operations. Two, our financing activities. Our finance activities provided another $70,000 of cash. Three, our investment activities used $10,000 of cash. Okay? Net cash provided by the Net cash provided for a one-year period, 70, 70, 140, less 10, $130,000. So this business overall generated positive cash flow of $130,000. That $130,000 of positive cash flow, that wasn't from our profits. Only $70,000 was from our profits. The other pieces came from investing and, and financing. Well, the way we tied in, remember, we tied, we kind of tied in the income statement, right? Well, we want to tie in, we want to tie this into the balance sheet. Well, we're doing a cash flow, so we need to tie it into our balance sheet, where our balance sheet has an asset that says we have X amount of dollars of cash. So the proof of the equation, if I took my beginning cash that I had on my balance sheet, Okay, and let's say my beginning cash was twenty thousand dollars. I I better be able to tie to my balance sheet. Better say that I have one hundred fifty thousand dollars of cash at the end of the year. <coughs> if it doesn't say that, there's something out of whack here. Okay, so let's let's go over this. We do the cash flow statement, we take a look at operations and, and determine whether there was cash generated from operations. We take a look at financing activities and determine whether there was cash provided or used by financing activities. Three, we take a look at investing activities and determine if, if there was cash provided by investment activities or used by investment. And the sum of those three components give us the net cash either provided or used by the business. If we add that or sum that with our beginning cash that we started at the beginning of the year, that should total and match up with our ending cash that we have on our balance sheet. And we've proved the equation then. So we can take two statements, a balance sheet and an income statement, that if we look at them independently, it really might not tell us about that business. But if we throw the third statement out there called the cash flow, it ties it all in. It kind of says, hey, you might have had a profit, but you might have used up, this could be negative cash, okay? Because you might have spent a lot of money repaying debt. Repaying debt isn't gonna be on the income statement. Repaying debt, is repaying debt an expense? No. When you, when you borrow money, you use that cash for your business. That's when you're paying, you're paying, that's when you're using it for expenses. When you, when you turn around and repay that debt, you don't get, that's not another expense. You're just repaying what you borrow, okay? Well, that transaction is not going to be on the income state, but it is going to be a cash flow transaction. So you got to account for it, okay? Is it kind of clicking?